Nice little break. If you're tuning in, thank you for tuning back in again. We've got a very special segment coming up that we know is going to be chaotic out of the gate because it's all about <laughs> handling this camera and moving it around. But we tried this several shows ago, and we thought it would be very cool if you got to see how some of these great photographers set their cameras and some of the things, the tricks that they have in setting menus and the way they set up the camera to shoot. So we're going to do that. So with us for this panel session, starting from my left to right, we've got Audrey Woolard. Yeah. Welcome. So, yep, my name's Audrey Woolard. I am um, a portrait photographer who specializes in teens and tweens based out of Chicago. And we've got Dixie Dixon, who just had her program <laughs> a little while ago. <laughs> awesome. Hey, guys. I'm a commercial fashion and advertising photographer and director. Um, thanks mm -hmm. so much for coming. <laughs> and Charmy Pena. I'm Charmy Pena. I'm based R out of... Wrapped in wire. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's going to be okay. Um, I'm based out of Princeton, New Jersey, and I primarily shoot weddings. Very cool. So we're going to switch over to the camera now. And... Um, We've had this set up uh, for a little bit. And I'm going to start this off by doing one important thing. And I'm going to ask the audience, and if you're tuning in, how many of you have ever upgraded your firmware in your camera? <laughs> I see a lot of hands down. <laughs> is it because you're intimidated, or is it because you just don't know what the value is or how to do it? Um, it's a really, really simple process that when a camera is upgraded in firmware, <coughs> that means there are significant changes or fixes within the camera. The beauty of it is our engineers can listen to feedback about how things are working in the camera. And for example, the Z series in one of the latest upgrades, uh, we introduced IAF and improved autofocus. And now we've gone to a version 3.0 where we've upgraded to now Animal AF and improved on AF as well. So, we listen to you, the engineers listen to us, and we make these changes. And it's really important to update the firmware because you may be missing out on having this camera evolve to the best kind of tool it can be. So within the menu system, when you come down to the wrench, first you want to check your firmware that you have. So you come up in this uh, uh, setup menu, and you come up to the firmware version. And when you tap in, I can tell you right now that the firmware for this Z6 camera should be at 3.0. Now, we of course, because this is a baking show, we already have a card in the camera that has the firmware file on it. And when you have that, you download it from the, uh, the web, you move it into an XQD card, or move it onto your memory card. Once it's on the memory card, the camera will recognize it as soon as you go into firmware. And it has the option to update. Now, I'm not going to perform that update now because it takes several minutes. But it's a very simple thing for you to do. And as soon as the update is done, you can actually come back in and just delete that file, that bin. It's a .bin file. So please, I promise you, it's a, it's a very simple thing to do. We just directed a video that we're going to launch short, uh, soon enough on how to do firmware. But I'm sure if you Google search it, someone can show you how to do this. It's a really cool thing and a very, very smart thing to do. So as we move forward, um, we're going to pass the camera around. We're going to start talking about some of our favorite features here. And I'm going to move over to Audrey first. Oh, wow. Give us some insight on maybe <laughs> one, or cool, one or two cool things that you do with your camera. So I am photographing a lot in um, kind of high contrasty areas and a lot of bright lighting. So I have, so, you know, I would run into different issues where I need my camera to be able to balance my shadows and lots of bright light and bring more detail. So two things. Well, let me give you another thing as well. When I'm shooting in bright light, sometimes the color temp of the areas that I'm shooting in will be affected by your white balance. So I'm going to show you two things. I am a fan of active delighting. And I think active delighting on. And I am with the, um, the Z7. And I swear to God, I practice this. <laughs> That's OK. It's live. It's really, really There cool. it is. There we go. So in here, you've got different choices. You can, have, you can have one actually set to auto. You can go extra high, which will bring in more deeper shadows. And sometimes, depending on how you're shooting, you can get a little bit of noise. But my favorite setting is actually between normal and high. So if I'm in a really bright situation, I'll really use that active delighting. I will shoot JPEG and RAW so I can have both of those files. Okay? My second tip would be the white balance. And so this is my favorite. 
So in white balance, believe it or not, I, you know what, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to go here. Can I, can I cheat and use this menu? Mm -hmm. Cheating. The little eye menu. So just explain to everybody what you did. On this particular camera, there's an eye button. So yes. you can jump to quicker menu settings, and in this eye area, you can, you can customize exactly. each of those boxes to go quicker to where you want and to And so the, the real benefit of that is that when you are actually on a photo session, you can get to those things really quick and on the fly. Mm -hmm. And so with my Z7, I actually like to shoot auto white balance. So within the menu here, you've got your choice to choose. Let's go down here. So you've got A0, A1, and A2. So if I go to A0, I'm basically keeping the color temperature. Um, with, I keep the white of the light, but it's actually reducing some of that warm um, temp. So if you're shooting like golden hour or something of that nature, this is a really good choice. You can choose over at, oh, I went out of it. You did say this was going to be chaotic, didn't you? <laughs> of course. So you can also use um, a one. I did it again. Can you see it? Well, you can still see it, yes? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah you can still see it. I think I'm hitting. Hang on, we're going to get there. There we go. So you can also keep the overall atmosphere, the, the color temperature that you're seeing. And then the last choice is A2. So if you like the warm colors that you're getting, you can choose between these three. And so using that eye menu that can get you really quick there on the fly, I can switch my white balance really quick without my client you know, being none the wiser. Mm -hmm. So those are mine, along with any fumbles that I did. That's totally <laughs> cool. Listen, we do that every day, don't exactly. we? Exactly. Yeah. Dixie, why don't Great. you take the camera Absolutely. and let's talk a little bit about what you do and how you do yes. it. Yes. Because you and I do a lot of similar things, right? We do. Yes, Absolutely. We do. Cool. So I always shoot in manual, but I will tell you guys, if you're just starting out, I also think it's a really good idea to try shooting an aperture priority so you can focus more on the connection with your subjects and less on the camera. But now I'm primarily shooting in manual mode. Um, but a lot of things I like to do in camera. How many of you guys like creating stuff in camera? I like to do and go to the menu and go to picture control and basically create these cool looks in camera. So if you go to picture control and you, there's a lot of different modes that you can go to, if you're shooting like some cool fashion accessories and stuff like that where you really want to bring out the color, um, you might try shooting in vivid and so you're able to instantly share them to social media using SnapBridge on the camera. So you can just go to Vivid, pump up the colors, sharpening. There's just so much that you can do So in there are camera. layers of menus, so you can actually isolate the different yes. things like sharpening and clarity in each of the menu settings. Yeah, exactly. So when you go, just to be clear, when you go into each of these, if it's going to portrait, it's the camera's already making adjustments for flesh tones and things like that. But you then can add to that. So just punch in the portrait real quick, Dixie. Absolutely. And, um, and so here's there. where you can change, again, all of these different things, your mid-range sharpening, your contrast, your brightness, to adjust the camera to shoot the way you do. The beauty of all this, just so, I know, so everybody knows, when you shoot raw, you have the ability to go back in post-production and change any one of these settings. So if you feel like you went too far with something, you're never at a loss. Right, if you lock exactly. in the JPEG and shoot JPEG only, all bets are off and that file is final. You can make edits to it in post-production, but it's not going to be taking it from that raw file format. So exactly. I know you're going back to black and white or monochrome. Oh, you right? knew it. You and I go nuts <laughs> about this mode. So my favorite, and it's very interesting because I love shooting this monochrome mode. And I actually shot some portraits the other day of this really great cowboy. And we did some sepia tone style images. And I actually liked everything out of the camera than I did doing it in post-production. So I use this monochrome mode a lot in like my portrait work and stuff like that. So you can actually go to filter effects. And then you can do different filters. I love the red filter. It's really beautiful for black and whites, as well as the, the yellow filter effects. So I use that a lot in my black and white kind of portrait type of photography. And you can instantly sh share it to social media. Mm -hmm. um, should I get into the formats? Yeah, because okay. I, I, one of the things I think that's really cool, and, and Dixie and I do this a lot, and maybe you ladies do as well, um, we shoot to uh, all the different formats, the full frame totally. and square one to one and 16 mm -hmm. nine. Explain your process here. Yeah, so if you're wanting to shoot different formats, this will actually shoot square format in camera and you can instantly see it as you're shooting. So if you go to, 
comes Sorry. off the top. It's okay. <laughs> I skipped it. So go to choose image area. This is in the top menu. It's at the very top. I scrolled all the way through. That's and okay. basically, you want to choose the different format. So you can shoot FX, which is full frame. You can do a DX crop. My favorite's one to one for portraits, especially those black and white portraits in camera. Um, so I use this a lot, and you can see it as you're shooting. It blacks out the area. Well, now, in this instance, you can um, take off the lens cap if you want to show. Oh, okay. It actually squares off the format. Just we tend to not take off the lens cap because, you know, you end up with uh, uh, a little bit of motion. Do you guys see how it instantly shows in camera? Mm -hmm. And you can also use this for video too if you want to create some cool square images. So. Yeah. And it's of course, a really great set you tool. up like I think you said for social. Can you set it quickly to 16.9? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Are there any of you out there that shoot video productions with still where you do a multimedia piece? A lot of times, if you shoot to the native format of the camera, you, you don't have the same format as your video. So setting to 16.9 mm -hmm. allows you to actually plant the still images right into the video without need of, of cropping them. Uh, if you shoot that original image. So that's really, really cool. Yeah, I use 16.9 quite a lot, actually, in fashion and commercial mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I think those are my favorite tools as Army. far as that goes. How about I'll you pass step it on. in here, and then we'll continue <laughs> this on. Yes. So just to piggyback the, the custom image areas, what I've been doing for when I'm shooting for an influencer or a, a vendor that I want to work with, when I shoot them, I make sure that I flip back and forth between the one-to-one -one and the 16 to nine, because now I have their Instagram feed and their Instagram stories covered. So whatever I shoot for them, if I shoot a vertical 16 by nine, they can just pop that into their stories and it fits perfectly. So well, are you changing formats at all in the work that you do or you just go straight up? I go straight up, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you, feel, you deal with the crop later on. So, I, exactly. Yeah, I, I think a lot of the settings of this camera, should be said too, are for people who do socialize quickly. If you don't have a chance to go back to a computer or you can't right. do editing. And we'll talk a little bit about in-camera editing in just a little bit. But, um, and we'll shoot, uh, make sure the camera's set to raw. We'll shoot a couple of pictures here. But go on, what, what else do you do, Charmy? So as soon as I get my camera, the first thing I do is make sure that this is set to AF on. So what mode are you in right now? Uh, you're, you're doing custom controls? Custom controls. So you're what you have the ability to do is change settings on certain buttons within the camera so you can contour set that camera up exactly the way you want it. For this particular camera, I would also consider setting the sub selector to AF on mm -hmm. because then that would allow me to move my focus points and focus with the same button, which is pretty amazing. But I'm very... Um, I, I back button focus, and so it's very important to me that this is the first thing I do when I get a new camera. Um, the other thing you have to do for back button focus is to turn the shutter off. Mm -hmm. um, so you want shutter focusing to be turned off. Um, right here, AF activation. So essentially what Charmy's doing is saying, when the camera comes out as its default, when you depress the shutter halfway, it triggers the autofocus system. Now, I can't walk and chew gum at the same time, <laughs> but many photographers use the back button to activate focus and independently use the shutter to shoot. I can't do that. I, I was groomed in an era of just, this is my AF. I use AF lock buttons on the lens or on the camera, and that's how I'm moving focus or controlling yeah. focus. For me, back button is priceless. I pick my frame first, mm -hmm. and then I focus, and then I wait for what I want mm -hmm. until I shoot. So you teach me that sometime, because I know <laughs> a lot of people do it, and I just yeah. haven't been able to I can't live without it. Connect it. Um, and then the other thing I do is I actually shoot um, expo uh, AV mode a lot. Mm -hmm. And so for me, easy exposure compensation is really, really important. So easy exposure compensation will mean that when I am in AV mode, I can just use my front. I'm so sorry to not be technical. Mm -hmm. Front dial. <laughs> front dial. Uh, if you want the technical Day exercise, seven, guys. it is called the front command dial in the instruction book. Front command dial. So I can use my front command dial to increase or decrease my exposure really simply. So for me, AV mode is uh, somewhere between real AV and manual because I'm actually controlling it a lot. Mm -hmm. But this is easy exposure compensation is what allows you to do that. Otherwise, you have to press down the button for exposure compensation. Mm -hmm. Cool. What else do you do? There's got to be other things in this camera that you guys set. 
<laughs> and control. Because if not, I'm going to lead you down this discussion and path. <laughs> I mean, I know some of these are some of your tips, uh, quick tips. Uh, if you go into the wrench, what's the first thing you do when you set up the camera um, in the way of a photographer? You want your copyright information following. Uh, absolutely. Yes. You know, uh, every picture. So in the metadata, a lot of people overlook these things, but you will now put your copyright the way you want your copyright. Um, and, uh, and the beauty of the Z series and some of the newer cameras is it's all touch menu so you can touch it in. What, what Charmy's doing right now is you can actually change the file extension, the front three yeah. letters of the file extension, sure. yeah. to your initials. And I know that doesn't seem like much, but when you're starting <coughs> to move files around, especially when you're on multi-photographer shoots, that identifies your file. So CP1 stands for? Charmy Pen no one. <laughs> I know, simple, right? <laughs> So uh, now that carries over with every file that's created. Yeah. You can also, I am nearly positive, so, some, of this is, um, some of this is so like set it when you get your camera and then you don't think about it again, but these are really important things. And if you don't do it when you get your camera, you'll regret it. Um, but I'm pretty sure you can put copyright information. Yeah, in down in well. the uh, setup menu. So go down right there, come over and we'll toggle through the menus. <laughs> and, and you see this process of going through all of these menus? When I get the camera back, I'm going to show you a little trick. So right now, she's jumped into copyright information. So you can put in your artist, your name. And then if it's your business or you're copywritten through your business, you can put in those digits as well. Yeah. So yeah. I always put in Charmy Pena Photography into every single one. I... <laughs> it's going to be a while if we wait for every single one. <laughs> and interestingly enough, I know this from the engineers. I always ask, how come there's no copyright symbol in there? because it's a very difficult character to create. So the copyright is just written into a field that's picked up in the metadata that says copyright. Mm -hmm. So now you set that up. Now, pop up one more. You can actually, oh, in the wrench, come over, image comment. This is actually different than copyright. If you go into image comment, let's just say you're working with several cameras. There are certain software packages that will read your serial number so you know which camera you're working with. You can put any comment in this field and it will be carried over in the metadata. And you'll have that opportunity to know exactly either what camera you set or what situation you're in and what that camera is responsible for. Sometimes, although it's still found in the metadata, I'll package uh, the information of the lens on there. I mean, is this kind of stuff interesting to you guys? Of course. And talk about how you would it's use important. it. I mean, no, yeah. It's I know these important. things are a little bit oversight sometimes. I mean, but exactly. Even setting the date at the right time if you're shooting multiple cameras. Right. So you can sync everything with like weddings exactly. and portraits too when you're shooting so many, I imagine is extremely important. Um, I know it sounds self-explanatory, but... I know I'm on a silly menu, it feels like, but sometimes the cameras come with the beep turned on. I always turn it off. Mm -hmm. Turn the beep off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like the beep. I like the beep. You like the beep? I, like I the hate beep. the beep. I get rid of it immediately. Yeah, some people, and when you go to silent, it's even weirder, right? Yeah, you don't even know if you took the picture, yeah. but it's amazing. Yeah. Cool. So what else we got, ladies? Tell me something I don't know. What about... Yeah, sure. Do you ever do any kind of processing in camera? I was going to talk about, how about IAF? Oh, absolutely. Oh. Yeah. That's, that's something new. Again, as okay. part of a firmware upgrade to yes. come with the original Z series cameras. Yes. And now in the first upgrade uh, to firmware, which we should mm -hmm. be doing all the time, practicing yes. safe firmware. Um, how do we set the uh, <laughs> autofocus settings? And how would you set autofocus in a normal shooting situation? So in my line of work in fashion, I'm so used to focusing. So I compose the image, and then I go and I move the focus point to the eye, and then I take the image. OK, that's a lot of work. <laughs> and I get tax sharp images every time, which is great. But now that the firmware upgrade happened, IAF, I can basically shoot portraits, and it chooses the eye as I'm shooting. I don't even have to do any of that. It's, it's a game changer. If you guys haven't updated your firmware, just the eye autofocus is incredible. So you go basically to your autofocus in the menus, and then go to, where you were is there. it? What did you say? Back up. Back up. <laughs> I don't know, for some reason. Go ahead, up A4. Oh, there it is. For some reason, when you're on the spot, it's hard to find these in the Listen, this is pressure. This is live <laughs> this is TV, so much girl. Pressure. It's so different. Oh it's like on God. a game show when you try to answer a question. <laughs> <laughs> We're usually doing this like, I'm usually doing this like in my pajamas yes, in my right. office. Not, <laughs> not like while people are watching. And, and remember, too, when you set these things, you yeah. only have to set them once, right? Yes. 
Is that the it's very point? true. So you want to turn face and eye detection on, basically. And they just added this for animals as well. So if you're shooting our, you know, dogs or cats or giraffes, for that matter, it, it all works really And if we updated to firmware 3.0, which this camera doesn't have, you would have yes. that option for animals. How many, yeah. shoots animal, how many of you shoot animal portraits? Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. it's again, everything evolves, and we hear which, hey, how come we don't have uh, Animal AF, and now we've got it. So mm -hmm. it takes a little time to write the firmware, yeah. but very, very cool. It's incredible, and it's so, so user-friendly. It just makes what we do so much easier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. I'm going to grab the camera back, if you ladies don't <laughs> mind, because I had a couple of things that, that ties us all together. So I, I got one real oh, quick. Oh, you, you want to steal yeah, it back? Yeah. All right, Sorry. it's all you. I'll give it to you, you in a second. Um, here, if focus points used, I find that sometimes there's, got, it's amazing that we can have this many focus points these days, but sometimes when I'm working is like too many. So, so I often will do that and cut it down so I only see half the focus points and it lets me move a little quicker. Mm -hmm. but, but now you can have it. All right, cool. <laughs> so imagine you set the camera up exactly the way you want it. And these are things that I think are oversights that are really, really important. If you have a spare memory card, you can do this, and um, it's probably one of the smarter things you can do. Now, there are two ways of saving settings. On a camera like the Z6 or Z7, you have U1, U2, and U3. You can set these up to be individual things, and when we go in, we can go into save user settings and lock those in to that particular <coughs> U1 setting. Go into U2, save those settings after I set the camera, whatever, metering mode, exposure mode, everything I want, and I can lock those in. But imagine now, as I work my way down into something called save load settings. This is very, very cool because I want to set my camera up and everything within the camera that I set now is locked in, right? So we told you to do the firmware upgrade. What I do here is now all the settings we've just locked in, all the changes we've made, if I hit save settings, it actually load those, those settings, loads those settings onto the memory card. I pull the memory card out. Now that I have settings loaded in, I take them into my second camera, maybe my second Z6. So when I come over to say load settings again, all I have to do is tap in oh. and load those settings into the camera. And now when you're working with multiple cameras, I can make every camera exactly the same on the dime. I think some of the other tricks when working with Nikon View software, when you're connected to the computer, it can actually pull the computer's date and time up. So there's all these little things that you can do within settings uh, that are just insanely crazy. So for me in picture control, Dixie, you and I do this a lot. When I go into the monochrome mode, I am always going to adjust my contrast just a little bit. I want my blacks and whites to separate just a little more. And very much like what Dixie was talking about, uh, if I want to wash the face a little of a subject, I'll actually change it to red and use the red filter. Remember black and white 101, red filter? And if I want to punch a bit more contrast, removing the greens, I go to the green setting. So there's so many different things you can do. But the toning is the one that's really cool that I figured out that if I'm in a high contrast situation, I can actually fool people into believing I shot a color photo in black and white. So anytime, maybe a bird in silhouette in the sky, if I come over to the different settings, the reds or the sepias, I may be able to adjust the color to something that's a lot more believable um, and uh, have, have those changes set. So uh, there, there's so much here that we can do, and I don't know if there's anything else you guys want to share in the types of menus that you do. Um, yeah, when we set pictures, things like uh, IAF and autofocus, all of these things you know, work in our favor. So uh, if there's anything else you ladies want to share at this point, that's great. And if not, again, just a little quick segment to see how these photographers set up their cameras. You're going to take it to something else, aren't you, Charmy? I mean, there's so much you can do with these yeah, You cameras. have to, like, sit and think about it. Because, yeah. like you said, you do it when you're, you might have your pajamas on and you sit and you do it. But when yeah. you're, you're really like, well, which one do I set? But once a lot of the things, once it's set, it's set. It's set. And then you won't have to do it anymore. So, yeah. yeah. Do me a yeah. favor, Charmy. Tap into autofocus. Go into the A menu. Where am I going? No, the menus. Go into uh, A menu and oh, go yeah, over to autofocus. There we focus. go. Okay. <laughs> this is very cool, too. When you have your different priorities and what you're setting, the AFC mode is going to be that tracking mode, right? So when you tap into the priority selection, there's two ways of actually shooting autofocus. One is release. So the camera's going to not fire unless, uh, or I'm sorry, it's going to fire every time when you hit release. If you go down to focus, what it's going to do is it's going to hold up 
and not fire until the sensor finds focus. Again, little things that you can do along the way. Most photojournalists will shoot in release mode because they never want to miss a moment, even if the camera's slightly out. Anybody that's into precise focus, like focusing on the eyes, I would think that's really, really important to you. So again, just another little tidbit. Yeah, so for me, this has held me up before. Mm -hmm. When I am setting a camera and I forget to change this to release, and then I go to shoot, and I'm like, why won't this take the fit? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I keep on the one you um, This has definitely held me up before. So if you have a preference, make sure that when you're setting it, you set it right away. Mm -hmm. That's do, good. Do I any of like you ladies use my menu? Any of you ladies use my menu? I don't. Not yet. But I, you can go. So you finish what you're going to do, and the okay. last thing I'm going to set to take away the chaos of all menus will be the last thing we talk about. OK. One thing, how many guys shoot video? Any of you? OK, cool. Um, one thing that, to keep in mind with shooting video, I always, when I'm shooting video, set it to flat profile, because um, this gives you a lot more leeway in the editing, and it just creates um, a lot more leeway when you want to pump up the colors and do different things. So always when shooting video, I would shoot flat profile. And I always use auto ISO all, when I shoot video as well. And they just updated with the firmware, now it can shoot ProRes RAW. Um, to an Atomos. Mm -hmm. So you can get raw video now from the Z series cameras, which is, I think is a huge upgrade. Mm -hmm. so, all right. Yeah. I'm going to close with one thing that will <laughs> take all of this. You see how many menus we were toggling through and how long it took to get through some of the menus? There's a setting that you must immediately go to right away. It's called My Menu. This, again, you set your camera up this one time. Right. What you do is you add items from different sections of setup or shooting. So in photo shooting, if I want choose image area to come up, I now place it in my menu. And now instead of having to go through all of these menus in here, I actually come right down to my menu, and I've got that set up inside uh, my menu area. So now I go right into choose instead of toggling through all those menus. So when you come back out, if you want to add items, I come back in. Dixie talks about a movie setting. Uh, maybe it's movie quality or movie file type. I can come in. I add that. Now it's set to my menu. Probably the smartest thing I've ever done was listen to my friend Lindsay Silverman, who swore by this feature for the longest time. Because now when I set my camera up, especially the Z series, I set my bottom front button to actually bring up my menu. I set my top button to actually bring up my image that I just shot. And I've actually converted the back button AF on to zoom in so I can actually zoom into the image I just shot. So again, there's a million different ways of setting these cameras. Um, again, it was just a really quick snippet uh, before we change over. Uh, I know, Audrey, you have a program yep. that we're going to load up as we transition over. Thank Absolutely. you guys for your time, and thank you for some of thank the insight. You. I know it gets a little kludgy <laughs> and crazy, and on-the-fly menuing is not so easy. But uh, thank you, ladies, for sharing uh, Thank you. Thank your you thoughts. so much. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Give us, us a few seconds to change over the set. And we'll finish out this day with Audrey Woolard and the most Italian-sounding Australian I know, Rocco and Cora, coming up here. Hold on tight. <laughs>